Hey guys, Christy here from DeSilva Life, and today we are talking all about ClickUp views. Make sure to hit that like button and subscribe to our channel if you are loving our ClickUp content. If you are new here, make sure to go check it out because it has helped so many people with their ClickUp setup. Okay, so maybe you are brand new to ClickUp, maybe you are more medium level. Wherever you are, I know that there are so many ClickUp views that you probably aren't using and may not even know what the heck they do. So that's exactly what this video is for. I'm going to go through each ClickUp view, how they're used, and what they're actually useful for and when to use them. Now, something that's super important is knowing that when you first dive into ClickUp, even now, if you're more experienced, you do not have to, or you even should not use every single ClickUp view for each list folder or space you're working in. We don't wanna create digital clutter when we don't need to see all those things at the top if it really doesn't apply to what we're seeing. I always tell my clients to start with the most simple being list view, and then build on from there if you're trying to look at the data and information in a different way. Okay, so let's dive in, I'm going to go through each individual view. Let's go through the ClickUp views. Now there is a lot to unpack here and we have other specific videos on our channel about some of these views going into depth and we will have more coming down the pipeline about the other ones. So make sure to subscribe to our channel if you have not already, but I want to rapid fire, go through all the different views ClickUp currently has to offer and when they're just really good to use for different circumstances. Now, something I want to mention, you could see if you click add view, this is all the views here, are all the views that you have to choose from. I always recommend when you are creating a new space, only start with the list view so then you can add the other views that you want to see according to that specific list or folder if you have all of the views added you're going to have a lot of clutter on this view bar up here and you want to try and avoid that you really only want to see what is how you want to see that information and i'll give you a little bit more clarity on this. Okay, so let's go through the different views. So this is basically a lot of them, like the task views, are how you're viewing the specific information within that list. You're just grouping it in different ways, okay? So we have this example list where I have some of these example tasks. We have statuses to do and progress review, needs, needs edits, done, complete, right? And this is automatically going to be defaulted to group by status. Now, just letting you know this trick, if you see this symbol right here, that means if you click this again, you're able to then shift the direction of the statuses. If you didn't know that, it was a mind blowing realization when I figured that out. Okay, so list view is basically seeing a list of all of your tasks and statuses, right? So you could see this example list here. Then here is an example of just a basic checklist. And then here you can see is a list where this is instead grouped by a custom field category instead of the statuses. So what I did here was create a drop down. And so I'll show you what that looks like here called category. We have admin, finance, backend, legal, research and development. I then added every single task now has a category assigned and then grouped by that category. So now I can see this checklist grouped by those different categories. Okay, so those are just better idea of what list view is. It's showing your tasks or your data in a list view. Then we have board view. Board view is Kanban style where you have task cards and you can bring them along this different, this like pipeline per se. So here we have to do in progress review needs edits done. And if you see, I can just go ahead and drag and drop these task cards. This is just another form of project management that people really enjoy having this board type view. Now again, here you can also group by a custom field. So it doesn't have to be naturally grouped by category, but instead here you could see in this list, we have categories, social media, 
admin, customer service, etc. And then if it doesn't have a custom field assigned, it'll show an empty, or you can say this one is admin. I'm gonna add that custom field by moving it over. So that is list and board. Then we have calendar view, pretty straightforward. You're just gonna be able to see any tasks that have due dates in this calendar view. And here you can also see day, four day, week, or month view. And you can also use hotkeys by just pressing D, four, W, or M. So calendar view, pretty straightforward. And all of these views as well, we're not gonna get into this today, but just to show you, you can also decide what you want to show on this view. Do I wanna see the assignee? Do I wanna see subtasks, priority, tags, etc.? Okay, so list, board, calendar. Those are the first few task view that you're gonna see. I like to call these the basic views. Now let's get into some of the more advanced views. So getting into Gantt. Gantt charts are just like what it looks like here. And these are really awesome for seeing a timeline of a project, but then also being able to visually see dependencies, which is what these lines are here. So you can see in this example, this is our project workflow mapping template. We have a list view here, which is grouped by the phase, right? Then we see some stuff on the outside here. And then these little uh, red and yellow circles here are dependencies, basically saying this task is waiting on this task or this task is blocking this task. Well, if you use dependencies, Gantt View is an awesome way to visually map these out. And then you can also delete them in here. Then you can also remap them in here. And then you can also move this whole project forward and all the dependencies will show in there if you make sure you click show reschedule dependencies so it moves the whole project. Okay, so that is Gantt View. Then moving on, let's go through timeline, box, and workload. Now I have a whole other video going through this on the channel that goes through them in depth, but just to go through that really quick, we have, these are really great views for capacity planning. So you'll see if you utilize time estimates, I think this really even elevates these views even more. So you can see these tasks have assignees, due dates, and then time estimates. So on box view, you're gonna be able to see each person, how many hours, or if you decided on number of tasks, you do that as well. So this would be task count. Um, so let me switch it back to time estimate. How many is not done, done, completed, breaking down each thing into statuses, and really being able to get a pulse check on each team member as to how they're doing with completing the progress of their tasks, their time estimates, all that good stuff. So that's box view. You can also see when you click on these views, it's also gonna tell you, monitor what people are working on, what's been done and who needs more tasks with box view, uh, mind map, workload. So make sure you check that description too so it'll give you like the exact description. Okay, so that's box. Timeline is essentially just going to see the timeline of the task within that space folder or list. And so you'll be able to see this task is running from September 12th to 16th. And this is automatically, you'll see the default, how everything will automatically be grouped when you go to add that view. And then you can decide, I actually wanna see timeline for each person on the team. And then it'll group it by the assignee, etc. Then workload is the bomb. You can see the team's workload with a one week view, a two week view, or a one month view. And essentially what this is doing is if you have time estimates or you can see task count as well here, it's going to group it by the assignee and show each person's workload. So if Jeff has 160 hours in a one month span, meaning per 40 hours per week. So if you'll see here, I set Christy's capacity to 20, Jeff's to 40. Then if I go to that week, I believe it was this one, you'll see Jeff has five hours of tasks assigned to him on Wednesday the 28th. And this way you'll be able to really see the team member's capacity of how much tasks or time estimates are assigned to that person and if they have capacity to take on more or they need less, etc. 
Okay, so those are those three views, timeline, box, and workload. Now let's go through table. So table is awesome for people who really love spreadsheets or the project management tool, maybe you switch from Airtable where you can create these custom tables in a list. So here you'll see we did it for a bills chart. And then in this example, we did it with a content table. So for Instagram, right? So how do you actually build something out like this? When you originally add a table, it's gonna look like this. Task name, assignee, due date, status, priority. Um, and so this was actually built out, same thing with bills, from using different custom fields and then pulling them into this table. And you can always hide or show those different columns. So that is table view. Next, let's move on to mind map. So I actually wanna go through mind map and compare it to whiteboard because they're this more like creative way of thinking of how things are in interconnected and sometimes workflows, but they are very different. So mind map essentially is where you're taking the tasks they have to be living. So these tasks are all living, you could see within this list. And essentially it's making these go being nested, right? So you're saying this is the list, here's the task, let's add subtasks here. Um, and then you're able to see how everything kind of goes into this web where whiteboard is just basically a whiteboard where you can brainstorm and be super creative. So here you can see you can just use all these different shapes, add text, connect things together, and you can see the different templates that you can use here as well. So it's kind of just like this visual playground of brainstorming, mapping things out, concept mapping, flowcharts, etc. So very creative. Mind map is seeing how everything within that list is connected together and kind of in this web where whiteboard is more for brainstorming and visually mapping things out. That doesn't have to actually be a living task within ClickUp. Okay, so mind map. So activity is just going to be Activity is a place where you can just see the activity going on within that space folder or list. So let me let this buffer. Okay, so here you can see in this activity employee database, and I'm gonna show the map view next. I, you just see, okay, I set the location to this, I assign dog cats, etc., etc. You change statuses, someone commented. It's literally just a feed of all the things in here. And then you can also filter out which activities you want to see versus which ones you don't. Okay, then let's move on to map view. So map view is if you utilize the location custom field, so new column, um, this would be location, and you can name that address, location, whatever you want. It's an address or a place to your task. You can use this for a bunch of different reasons, right? In this, I just created a sample employee database. I put the location of each of these employees, and then on the map view, then you can see where each of these employees or tasks are. So depending on what you want to use this for, you can use it for really cool different things. Okay, so now let's move on to doc, chat, embed, and form, wrapping this up. So this I'm actually going to go into, this is our project workflow mapping template available in our shop and our template vault. And so imagine this is a project that you're working on for a client or within your business. This is grouped by phases. You saw the list view, right? Well, we love having a doc view to have multiple different docs attached to that client project or that specific project within De Silva Life. So doc views, you could do so many amazing things with them. You can have it right here, easy access attached to this list. Then we have forms. Forms can essentially replace Google form, type form, whatever it is. Essentially, you're taking this form, putting in these custom fields. When the person answers this form, it then funnels into 
the list view, right? So examples of forms could be testimonial forms. We have one for our system school office hour Q&A. So people submit this form, we have automations running, and then it's all funneling into one specific list. And here is the example of a client onboarding form. And then we have embed view as well. So this is where you can embed specific things, just put the URL and essentially what it's doing is it's taking this thing, say we use this document to map out the workflow for the client, then this is literally natively embedded right in that ClickUp list for easy access and I can actually edit this in here as well. So stinking cool. And then last one is chat. This is just a view that you are able to then add this to a specific list and chat back and forth. So whether you want to add this and have this as a central location to chat with your client, or we have one on our YouTube list that we chat with our editor back and forth, great option. Okay, so that was a lot. We went through every single view, what they can be used for. I hope this was enlightening to you and remember, not all of these views may apply to your specific business, to your specific project. So make sure you are applying the ones that you want and need to see, leaving out the others. And then if someone on your team prefers viewing things in board view versus list view, make sure that person, if they want to add that, go right ahead. Just add it as a private view so it's not cluttering up everyone else's ClickUp views and everyone can view the information how they prefer to see it. So that is it. So I hope that was helpful for you in learning what each of these views even do and what they're useful for as you start experimenting using these in your own business and click up. If this video was helpful for you, make sure to hit the like button and subscribe to our channel. If you are brand new to ClickUp and you wanna know more, there are a bunch of different resources out there for you. One being our our ClickUp 101 guide on our freebie section on our website. I'll make sure to link it in the description below. We also have so many ClickUp tutorials on our channel for you to go ahead and binge right now or later. And we also have an entire ClickUp course and template vault in our system school. Not to mention our digital product shop as well, but we show all of our templates in our template vault. It's pretty sweet. You also have myself and the team support in our community group the whole way through. So if you wanna check out system school, check out all of our ClickUp resources, make sure to check out the link in the description below. With that, thank you so much for watching. I hope this video was helpful for you and I'll see you next time.